Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you 10 essential Linux commands for new users of Linux or Ubuntu. So the first one on my list is the sudo command. If you've heard people talk about Linux, this is probably the command that comes up the most. There's the whole joke, sudo make me a sandwich. And what sudo means is to take administrative control. If you run a command with sudo, it should execute 100% um, of the time because it's an administrative override to the Linux machine. So if I wanted to say change the ownership of those HS um, underscore error files, the logs on this screen right now inside of my home directory, I could try to do something like a ch own, which means change owner, and change it to root root HS star, which means uh, targeting all of the files that start with HS and end with anything after that. And then I try to change it to root, but I can't change it to root because that command in this case is requiring administrative permissions. So if I try to show the files on screen, how long it on a minute? Let me try that again. Grab HS. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, then you can see that those files still belong to me. They don't belong to root, so the command definitely failed. But if I go ahead and type in sudo chown and then root colon root hs star, then that command is going to execute properly. So now those have been chosen, uh, changed to root. And that's just one instance where you can use sudo. There's going to be many other times when you need to use sudo in order to execute your commands properly, such as some of the others we're talking about on this list. Now, one other command that doesn't require root, thankfully, is cd, change directory. Um, it's critical for moving through the Linux operating system. Yes, you can use the file explorer, which works a lot like Windows. But in many cases, to be efficient at Linux, you got to use change directory and then just change into the directories you want to access inside of the terminal directly. If you don't like uh, terminal or command prompt, you're probably not going to like Linux that much. Just saying. So by changing directory into desktop as the target, of course, it moves my position in the terminal from my previous directory into that one. So another command that is going to be really common is change directory root, and root is indicated by a forward slash. So by doing that, and I type ls, um, you can see that we're in the root directory now, and we have all of these other directories which branch off for the system. So I, I guess this uh, last five seconds kind of illustrates the ls command, which is one I wanted to talk about, which is, uh, I don't remember what the abbreviation stands for, but basically it just means list the stuff that's in the directory. So you can see the other directories, the subdirectories, which have this light blue text. And then I believe the light blue is a link to a file that's actually stored elsewhere on the computer. And then a regular file would be the white text but ls at the basic command is just going to list what's in the directory you can expand that by typing in ls uh, space dash la which is going to list everything in the directory including hidden files hidden files indicated by the period in linux and it's also going to show all the information for that if you just want hidden files i believe it's dash a and if you just want all the information but not showing hidden files it would be dash l so uh, there's a few subcommands for you. Now, if you want to find a file on your computer, a uh, really quick way to do it is to type where is. I don't know if this is an, uh, defaulted to every Ubuntu or every Linux operating system, but it's definitely on Ubuntu 16.04, which is what I'm currently using. So if I wanted to say find Java, I type where is space Java, and that shows me the directories uh, where files with the name Java are installed on my computer. Uh, which is really handy because it's quick and it shows you exactly where to look for them. Now, a slower way of finding something would be uh, find period, which means the current directory. And find is recursive, so anything that's like a subdirectory inside of the current directory, it's going to search there too. Dash name and then the file. So I could type in find period dash name and then space Java. But that's going to be really slow, especially when I'm searching through the entire computer. So if I want to use find, it's normally going to be more localized. So for instance, if I'm over here and let me see if I have anything in the music directory, change music. 
Linux case sensitive, of course. All right, let's go into NetBeans projects. Okay, so I have a thumbnail downloaded for YouTube. Let's change out of that directory and then let's try to find that file. So find period representing the current directory in all subdirectories, dash name, thumbnail downloader for YouTube. And theoretically, it should find that directory as a file because everything on Linux is a, uh, is a file. So it's going to show everything that matches that, um, that string term, the thumbnail downloader for YouTube, which in this case is more than just the directory. And to note, you can see that some of these files I don't have permission to search through. And that's because I'm not executing it as the root. Those files may be owned by the root. Uh, or basically the administrator or the computer itself, rather than me as the user. So you may want to run that command with sudo instead, like this. Um, we're going to not do that right now so that we can move on. So if you ever want to install anything in Linux or Ubuntu, you're going to have some variation of apt-git install or pacman-s, which are the same thing depending on your distribution. Uh, Pac-Man would be for Arch Linux and Manjaro, those kinds of uh, platforms, and for Ubuntu, and I'm not sure about other Debian-based uh, platforms, but definitely Ubuntu, you use sudo apt-git install and then the name of the program you want to install. So if you want to install the NetBeans IDE, it's like NetBeans uh, wine here, and if it's already installed, it will let you know. As you can see here, it says wine is already at the latest version, great. So we don't need to do that. Uh, along with apt-git install, there's a lot of useful things with apt-git uh, specifically. You can do sudo apt-git purge, which removes the program and all of the files that have been downloaded to install that program by doing this. And it will give you the confirmation. So if I wanted to uninstall wine, it would go ahead and do that for me. But I'm going to hit no because I do want to keep that around. Um, and then apt-git remove once again you pretty much always need to use the app, uh, sudo with the apt-get command but remove would remove the program without removing the installation files from the computer and there's some other stuff like apt-get upgrade which takes your system and tries to update uh, the core components of it to the latest version or oh, actually that might just be just upgrade um, but yeah, you can do other stuff with apt-get. The point is, it's very useful. And pacman or pacman syu, um, those are the kinds of commands you would do use on Arch Linux to do the same types of things. Just different tools for different platforms. So remove, if I wanted to say, remove these files in my home directory, the hs files, rm is for remove, and I could do rmhs star to represent every file that starts with hs and ends with star but you can see because i don't have administrative privileges and those files belong to root it's going to give me this prompt here now i can override that and hit yes to remove a write protected file but i'm not going to do that if i did run it as root it wouldn't even ask me about that it would just go ahead and do that oh and remove slash uh, dash r is remove recursively so if you remove a directory like this and you have to use dash r to remove a directory it will remove every single file inside that directory um, until it's all gone so if you do like and please don't do this do not do this rm dash r and then space forward slash for root I believe that would just remove everything on your computer and pretty much make it useless. So please don't run that command, but uh, yeah. Okay, uh, last three for this video. Hopefully you're following along. I'm trying not to make it too complicated here. Uh, grep command. You may have seen me actually already use this a couple times. I'm not sure if I did during this video. But if you want to filter like an ls command, which lists all the files in a directory, and you want to filter that so that it only shows some of the... Uh, files in that directory. You can use a pipe, which you can normally access by shift and then the key right above your enter uh, on the keyboard, which is a backslash, I believe. Yeah, backslash. So shift backslash gives you the pipe. And that means feeding one command's results into another. So it's taking the ls commands and it's feeding that into grep. Um, and what grep will do is whatever phrase you give it, it's going to take 
all the names of the files and it's going to only return results that have this string term in it. So it's only going to return files that have hs in it. And I believe you can also feed files into it so that you can return name, uh, basically uh, lines from a text file that will only have that command as well. Not 100% sure about that, but grep basically if you want to filter the results of one command and only show lines that have a specific phrase in it, like hs right there, that's a good command to know. So for instance, if you want to see all the files in a directory, including hidden files that start with hs, this would be the command you type ls-la to show all information in uh, all hidden files, and then pipe it to grep hs. Okay, so two more commands. Change mod. So in Linux, uh, file permissions are basically set up like this on the side. You can see read, write, and execute. And there's three different levels of it. There's the user level, there's the group level, and then there's the, uh, and by user, I mean the owning user. And then the third level is the anybody on the computer, basically access to the public uh, level. And that's uh, basically from left to right. You can see here, this file is read, write, execute for the owner, which is Chris. Uh, and then read and execute, execute is the X for, uh, the group, which is also Chris, and then read and execute for all other users on the computer. So if you ever need to change the permissions, and, and you probably need to go look up like the exact uh, permission settings for this if you really want to get into the command, but at a basic level, if I want to change the permissions of a file, I would type in something like change mod 644, which means... Uh, I can't remember exactly what it means. I, mean, I think it means read and execute for the user and then just read for group and uh, for group and all other users for the computer. But anyway, change mod, the permission settings you want to uh, basically add to that. And then the file name. So I could put in examples.desktop here. And I believe because that's read and execute for the user or read and write okay it's read and write so six is read and write and then four is just read only uh anyway it changes the permissions for examples.desktop so let me show you another example so change mod 777 means read write and execute for both the user the group and all users of the computer for the file examples.desktop and now if i show it in ls again you can see this file actually has read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. And a file that's executable uh, is going to be marked in green. One other quick thing to men mention here as a bonus, whenever you do ls-l, if there's a D in front of the uh, permissions, that means it's a directory. If there's no D, that means it's just a file. So hey, there, bonus. I'm going to actually change that back here to the previous permissions. Oh, right, that's change own. Uh, change mod is for permissions. Change owner or change own is for the ownership. Who's the user and who's the group of the file. Okay, great. So the last file, uh, the last command that we're gonna do for this video is add apt repository. And this is Ubuntu specific. Not sure if this works on uh, Debian in the same way, but if you do, and you probably need to do an, uh, a sudo command in addition, sudo add apt repository here, and then space ppa colon, uh, which is basically the predecessor to uh, the thing you need to type before you specify which repo you're adding uh, to the Ubuntu list. And then if I do something like ubuntu-wine slash ppa and you can find the repository ppas online to do this then what this will do is it'll take the repository ubuntu wine and it will add it to my ubuntu list of active repositories and then whenever i type sudo apt-get update it's going to include that repository in the list of uh basically repositories to track and what i mean by a repository is a place somewhere out there on the net 
which stores a bunch of different programs and and installable files that you can download. And the importance of having uh, these different repositories added to Ubuntu like this with the add apt repository command is that it allows you to actually install apps from those repositories using apt-get install and then the name of a program. So not every single program out there on the web is immediately available with apt-get install. Many you actually have to add the repositories to Ubuntu so that it knows where to look so that it can go and grab those packages. So I hope that makes sense at least. And then um, then I would be able to do something like apt-get install wine as we were talking about. And of course, I need to have root for that. And then I would be able to install the wine package. Now, there might be a base wine package in Ubuntu, but uh, the one from this repository is a different version. So it's not always just that you need a new program, but also maybe that you need a new version of a program. Uh, so basically, just note that if you need to install something specific from a specific place out there on the web, you might need to add the apt repository. So I know there was an absolute ton of information in this video. I recommend if you were confused about anything, go back and give it another listen. Of course, you can also supplement this video by going and searching the official details online about each of these commands to get more information. But I really do feel like these are the 10 you're going to use uh, pretty much the most. You could also throw in the change owner in there, but we did talk about that a little bit. So in any case, I've been Chris. I hope you found this video as an introduction to Linux terminal commands to be helpful. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked this video, consider subscribing to the channel and maybe throw a donation at the Patreon. And I'll see you in my future videos.